guys and welcome back uh, I've actually harvested those apples that I've been waiting to harvest for so long I've taken you back many times to the uh, secret orchard but I've actually got in my little bit of harvest like I said I never overkill it I only just take what I'm going to use and need the rest is left to the wildlife and I'll quickly show you and um, so far as I'm concerned it's a nice little harvest for ourselves so I'm going to bring you down and you can see I've got uh, two carrier bags or shopping bags full to the brim with apples and those in there are mostly eaters but I will skin those they're very sweet but they will produce really nice um, apple pies and crumbles these apples without too much adding too much sugar so they will be cooked these apples not eaten although like I said those red ones are absolutely the best eating apples you could ever come across. It's a bit of a mess here on the uh, worktop. I've just got two more hiking sticks. I'm just about to put some lanyard on. I finished these. They were they were finished up yesterday. Um, this one's got a nice um, fox uh, head on it. If you can see that burnt into it, there a nice fox head. Looks absolutely stunning. I've tried to use the little bit of bark just to give it a bit of shading to the uh, redder patches that a fox would have. And I think it's worked out really nice. But yeah, those two there will be going out on the stall. Um, this last one here has a um, stag's head. They always sell well. People like stag's head. It just represents the forest. And my sticks are in that vein of being, you know... Hike pure hiking sticks anyway, so technically I make them for use out in the field. Um, they're not kind of ornamental sticks, they're working sticks. But yeah, so I've got those done, but I have had one disaster. And I'll take you around. I did actually leave the workshop door open. And because I left the workshop door open, I've had to strip this one right back. As you can see, I've had to strip all the wood burning um, there was a stag's head on this one, but that's been stripped off. So it's been scraped right the way back and I've got to sand it, refinish it and do the wood burning and put the uh, varnish back on the top. Why did I, why am I doing that? And it's a lot of work to salvage a stick back. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah, and the reason for that is I made a massive, massive schoolboy error. I had my stick... Uh, it was hanging up here drying after I finished it, but messing about here with the cats and finishing up at the evening when it was dark, I left uh, the light on up here and the door open, which meant we ended up with uh, insects flying in here. So basically I put a, a wet stick with varnish up, left the door open, left the light, insects attracted to the light came in here and when I came in <laughs> the whole stick looked like a fly trap it was covered with flies massive error on my part but it meant I have to strip it right the way back sand it do all the burning and finishing again devastated with the amount of work because I don't charge a lot for these sticks anyway and I'm rehashing a stick I've already made but uh, hey ho you learn or I didn't learn and um I won't be making that mistake again. I'd just like to show you something quite strange going on with my pear tree and it's really intriguing me, uh, particularly for the time of year we're in. But I'll just let you have a look. Basically, I've stated that this tree is doing really well and it is, it's really pushed up at least a, nearly a foot, if not more, uh, through the growing season. But although a lot of the leaves are dying off for winter, it's trying to throw some new ones. It's also trying to throw flowers. And I have a baby pear. I'm not quite sure what's going on with this tree because to be honest with you, it should be getting ready to uh, shut down and hibernate, uh, you know, for the winter months because it is actually losing leaves, but it's like it's, it's really confused and it doesn't know what it's doing. But um, that obviously bodes very well for next year because um, if I've got fruit here now, it stands to real good reason. With it producing flowers, I'm going to have a good crop next year. That's just me guessing, but we'll have to wait and see. 
With the uh, vegetable patch, I've been getting loads of horse poo off the moors and bringing down here and tipping on. I need to get another couple bags. Um, that's possibly going to be my next job. We've got two new chickens. Um, we purchased them from a uh, reliable um, dealer with chickens. Uh, the only thing is they don't like to let an individual go at a time. It's usually as a pair. And that's you know not a hard set rule, but it's what they kind of suggest. Um, so I've got two new brown ones in there. Now the reason that uh, we've obviously uh, bought another pair is because um, we lost one before we went to Portugal due to illness and um, becoming you know you know it was becoming ethical to really um, you know put her out of her misery, um, which we did and um, obviously that left space in the coop and um, Bluey, the one that lays blue eggs for us um, will be approaching her fourth year so it's getting to the point we could possibly lose her uh, this winter um, she is getting old but um, you know, hopefully these two will settle in and um, you know, have a long happy life here doing what uh, the other chickens have done so that's one of the new ones there sat on that perch and um, yellow ones stood beside it and these are the other girls and Bluey's at the back. They've got a bit of a standoff going on. We've stopped them actually fighting and it's been sort of like two weeks so they're getting used to each other but they're still a pecking order. And these two are at the bottom and they basically have to you know keep their distance they will gradually work their way into the uh, the, the flock and the pecking order but at the moment uh, we're just grateful they've stopped fighting but there's still that tense standoff as you can see where they're watching every move the original girls make and the original girls are kind of asserting their authority by keeping them in that position of tension. Right, it's a bit blowy up here, but there are plenty of uh, sheep, cows and horses. And um, with that comes plenty of poo. I'm not going to struggle to find any. And there you go, right on the road. I'm not even going to have to walk very far to uh, get my bags filled with uh, manure. I grant you this is probably not uh, prime YouTube material watching somebody picking up uh, dung for the garden, but like I say, it, it will it will help nourish my garden and help bring on the. Um, the nutrient value and bring my soil up to good condition because it hasn't had no work like organic matter on it because it's been hid away for like 15 years so this should do it really good so yeah um, all natural and free so there you have it I've got my two bags of poo um, not pleasant viewing but uh, I've got my two bags of poo so I've already put two on this will go on that's four and um, I will get some seaweed when I'm next down at the coast and like I say I'm you know feel I'm rejuvenating the soil for my uh, vegetable patch right then as I'm up here I'm going to be dropping down to a, a, a valley through a little lane and I'm going to come down to a little communal or a uh, yeah, it's a communal woodland which is owned by the community um, in however and whatever capacity that is. And uh, I'm going to go and scout it out and pick up a few acorns off the floor. Um, and I'll discuss the reason for that uh, in a moment.
So yeah, I'm on the hunt for acorns. I've had some success at home planting acorns, um, unintentionally I have to add, where we tried to um, incubate some acorns and bring on to young trees. They looked like they were unsuccessful and we tipped it all out, the compost which we potted them into, into a pile, into a part of our garden and lo and behold we had several uh, trees uh, or young saplings start coming out of it, uh, much to our surprise. I've saved one or two and in the end we've had um, basically four trees from that um, should we say acorn harvest unintentionally so as you can see I'm no expert at uh, how to bring acorns on but I'm possibly going to work on that same philosophy get as many acorns as I can of possibly green and brown plant them and let them do their thing and see which ones germinate and what we want to do if we're successful is do a little bit of um, wild gorilla planting of trees like, like, of English oak trees basically when they get to a size we feel they're ready to be planted out we'll plant them out somewhere in a location of our choosing and hopefully watch and nurture them on to become full trees and it's kind of like a legacy thing you know I just I've just got this little bug to do it so I have a couple oak trees in front of me and I'm scurrying around in all this bracken and leaves and there's another couple oak trees over there for acorns but I do believe I'm actually doing this a little bit late because um, I think the squirrels have had most of them all the wildlife and what is here is looking in poor condition but anyway I'm going to give it a go it can't do no harm and uh, I've got another location I'm going to stop on the way home to see if I can harvest some acorns. Still a few slow berries around. Um, they're looking extremely purple. They're gonna be uh, stripped from the trees pretty soon. Um, I think we're due a little bit of a colder snap soon. I can just feel it. I mean, that's just intuition. But uh, yeah, they won't stick around much longer. But um, I'm just walking down this track. I haven't been on it before. And I'm gonna see um, if I can find a good load of acorns. Where I was back there, it looks like the sheep have been eating them. Whether they do eat them or not, I'm not sure. But I've just come across a, an apple tree here, if you can see. And there's lots of apples on the floor. You might just see some of the apples up there. Um, they're on the floor. And I can see them around here. And a lot of them look like they've got big chunks eaten out of them. So that's de de definitely sheep eating those. But I'm going to continue down here and see if I can find a nice oak tree. I haven't been on this track. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this uh, little walk as well. Well, on the floor here, there's a lot of hazelnuts that have come down. And, um, yeah, there's quite a lot here in one big go. It's almost like uh, we haven't had wind to really give the tree a big push like that or a shake. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of them around here. It might be the tree just shedding them all. They don't usually shed in a vast quantity is usually a steady drop off but um, this tree seems to have done its business like throwing them all at one time yeah loads of them here but anyway let's continue on it looks like I'm going into a slightly um, denser part of this little track that's heading into this bit of woodland 
Right. These are their hazel here. But I do have a oak just on the opposite side. And there's a lot of um, acorns here. And I'm not 100% sure whether green or brown ones are the best ones to germinate. Because I've read conflicting reports. But um, I'm going to take all the colours and try. So this is a, a nice little bit of uh, woodland actually. And the track looks like it meanders back up to the road. So there's not a lot um, of distance or size. But it's just offering... Uh, that little bit of uh, an old woodland feel here and because it's flanked by a road and some agricultural fields I have a suspicion this hasn't really been touched that much for a long time or has ever touched it's just pretty much allowed to um, do its thing as nature intended but um, yeah I'm going to push on up through this track here um this is a very pleasant piece of woodland and um it's, it's been well worth getting out the car to have a look at this the only thing is it's slightly disappointing on the acorn front because um <laughs> i definitely feel by what i'm seeing on the ground so to speak not that much in the way of acorns and what is there is all brown rotted and bust open and eaten so I think I'm a little bit uh, late to this party so yeah I'm making my way back to the car because um, it's six o'clock and light is just beginning to hit that part of uh, the day where if you're in the woods you know it's just starting to dim quite fast um, but uh, yeah, it's been a nice little walk here and I should definitely be back uh, during the uh, winter months because this looks to offer some wind protection for me when I'm hiking and on top of that, it looks to be extremely quiet. So yeah, this looks like it's going to be another little area for my own little personal um, coffee stops out on the trail. So yeah, I'm uh, glad I've scampered down this little hidden track. So yeah, always a positive. The only one thing is I, I'm beginning to realise uh, in my location here in North Cornwall, um, I could be a little bit late for acorns. I do have possibly 30 or 40 in the bag here. Ones that I think will uh, germinate because they're not looking damaged or infested with bugs or you know too too far gone but um i'm going to quickly stop on another um little piece of uh, woodland on the way home and i'm going to see if it's a little bit more productive than here for acorns I'm just walking alongside this river and I'm beginning to lose light as you can probably see but there is something uh, different about it in this kind of light. I usually walk in bright sunlight and um, it's really uplifting and cheery. When it's like this you definitely get that feeling of foreboding and something kind of almost magical when it's uh, this kind of light but um, yeah nevertheless uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. This white stuff isn't bird poo, it's actually resin coming out of the trees. And quite often that's produced to inhibit insects or to heal wounds in the tree or any sort of like infections. But that's good for like uh, starting fires in the bushcraft world. But I'm going to make my way up this track. I'm still to find any uh, oaks at the moment with uh, a nice quantity of acorns. 
So I think I could be out of luck and what I've got in my uh, bag may be what I'm actually going home with. Right, I'm walking up a, a steep track to the top of the woods and it's going to take me out to a lane which basically does a circular back to where I've parked the car. I do know there's oaks there. I'm going to see if I can get any before it gets too dark. I think it would be a waste of time, you know, traipsing around in here. There's just too much leaf uh, cover. And uh, yeah, I do have a plan. I'm going to implement it, see if it uh, yields any results. Yeah, as I steady my breath, it's quite fascinating, the human mind. And when it gets to this sort of twilight time, a lot of people will feel anxious about being in the woods. A lot of people will feel nervous, unsettled. Their mind will start racing and start concocting and, you know, every little noise sound and indeed shadow movement they see will cause fear and panic. That is actually a normal condition because as a, as a human, your, your main body clock is set up to run in the daylight hours, not at night time. You're not nocturnal by um, design. And on top of that, because of that, being in a woodland environment, your mind over millennia has been built and formulated to tell you, you could be in danger. There is actually, you know, predation that could happen on you by being out and in these kind of environments where you're not safely tucked away, you know, safely secure. So, you know, it is a normal response to feel that. But the more you stay in the woods, the more you understand it, the more you do a little bit of research. And indeed, the more you're around it, you begin to feel more comfortable. Now, I'm reasonably comfortable in these sort of environments, whatever weather, whatever um, daylight conditions, nighttime conditions. But it still doesn't stop me occasionally hearing a noise. I'm just turning my head to hear and have a look and see what that noise was from. And when you can't physically see or hear or make sense of it, it can just lead that little bit of a thought that runs through your mind. What is it? But like I said, that's all natural human instinct, biology, makeup and nature that has formulated and allowed us to survive as a species. So if you're ever in the woods and you do feel, you know, a little bit unsure, you know, particularly in an environment where there are no large predators, you know, that could do you harm, you know, you know, don't, don't feel too bad because it's just part of the human condition. But yeah, I just thought I'd just put that out there, a bit of a random one. But having said that, you know, if there are, uh, you are in a part of the wood where there are predators and things like that, um, that human condition is there for a reason. And you know, heed it and heed the warnings. Um, never be foolish and never think that you're invincible. You know, listen to advice, listen to warnings. And on top of that, listen to your own body thoughts and feelings. And um, yeah, like I said, you, the human instinct and human uh, um, thought processes evolve for a reason. So yeah, if you are in an area with large predators, you know, take care and um, obviously obey all warnings and look after yourself and make sure you take precautions for your own safety and those that may be with you. So you can see now, 
light is really beginning to dim here in the woods so there you go there's my haul of acorns and I've taken as mixed bag of colors and um, you know conditions as I can and I, I mean by that to give me the biggest chance of germination um, they all look pretty clean as in there doesn't seem to be any pest infestation and they're not damaged but like I said I've chosen a wide, a wide uh, variety of colors and I will see you know, which ones actually germinate the best well it's that time of day the kids are upstairs I've got a knife and an apple in my hand I'm not eating this apple I'm skinning it and I've got plenty to skin um, I'm getting them ready to go into the freezer it's got to be done really tonight and uh, I've got the fire lit I've got a glass of red wine so you know I should be set till pretty much I would say the next couple of hours doing this but I can remember my grandparents doing this my parents and how I'm doing it and it's a scene that's been played out you know endlessly really but um, you know all over the world wherever apples are harvested um, but yeah you know there's something soothing about this and it's therapeutic because you've got time to think and uh, I've got a log fire going which isn't really for this time of day but in the mornings it's quite cold when you all come downstairs and if I stoke that one up turn the air off it will just chug away all night and when we come down in the morning it'll be lovely and toasty and warm and indeed that heat filters upstairs and keeps the rest of the house warm through the night so yeah that's the reason it's on basically full of morning and um, you know not really for me now but it's pretty uh, nice to look at and it's pretty aesthetic uh, I'll just let you have a quick look so there it is roaring away and I will throttle that back once it's up to temperature and um, it's one of those eco ones where it'll actually you know make a piece of wood last a long time um, I've got a glass of red wine to go with it like I said so that's keeping me company got me apples to skin my bowl full of them I've got water there to help them stop going brown or waste but that just it's just gorgeous autumn autumn at its finest but um, yeah basically I'm going to be doing this for the next few hours right then so you can quite happily see what I've got to do here I'm going to have uh, the rest of my wine here while I do this and uh, all that's left for me to do is bid you uh, farewell. Stay safe. I hope to catch you out on the trail. This is Andy. Take care. Cheers.